Welcome to Area DMG. Welcome back to Area DMG. I'm your host, Phil Wesley, the Mile High Mouth, and today we're going to take a look at the movie Hercules by Disney. This one in the 90s and stuff. And we're going to look at the first 15 minutes of the film and see if it's successful in both setting up the course of the film and, the, and establishing the thesis for the film, as well as making you want to watch the rest of the film. So, hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, and let's get right down to it here with this first 15 of the Disney movie Hercules. Actually, Disney movies are a fun one for these because the way they're designed is pretty compact and tight. We already went through, I think I think we went through The Little Mermaid and we're going through a bunch of other animated films. But generally, you have a lot more care that you can put into your first 15 in a live action where, well, we need to show you how these people go about establishing everything about the film, your basic concepts, etc. Now, the first shot in Hercules is of a museum of statues and art. Yeah, you're, you're given like all these old dusty statues, which is to say that the first ep first section of it is a little bit um, deceiving. You have a narrator, if I remember correctly, it's like Charlton Heston, and he starts up, you know, long ago, blah, 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 blah. And this is really quickly replaced by the muses who explain through a catchy song called The Gospel Truth, everything you need to know about the background of the Titans, Zeus, and um, Asgard, <clears throat> I mean Olympus. Anywho, so this is, um, let's see. And then the narrator, of course, disappears for the rest of the film. But this sets up everything about the basic concept here with the Titans. Like, when the world was new, huge, horrible things wandered the earth. They were all like, and Zeus is all like, Oh, no, 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 that's bad. So Zeus is all like, I got these bolts, these lightning bolts. I'm going to take these things out. So he goes all shadow of the Colossus on the Titans and then eventually um, imprisons them in the earth. He doesn't kill them. You know, don't leave your enemies alive sometimes. It depends. You know, in the, in the art of war, you leave one enemy alive. You take out the entirety of something and then you leave one left. But let's not get into the art of war. That's something different. We'll go over that at some point. It'll be great. Anywho, uh, he traps them, right? And then after that little bit, we're given the birth of Hercules, an introduction to Hades, and an introduction to the rest of the gods, a little g, gods. And then you're also given Pegasus, and we're given the, well, after all this stuff here, you kind of get the idea that Hades doesn't exactly like Zeus because Hades is lord of the underworld has to do everything with death and he's just like you know what i don't really like this because i'm just bored of it it's boring to me because hades doesn't have any empathy which actually makes him perfect for the job because you need something without empathy to handle what is essentially a painful and horrible situation the ruler of hell must be a narcissist they can be nothing other because a ruler of hell with the ability to empathize with others is no ruler. They're just another member of it. You must have the inability to empathize, empathize to feel, to, to do torture, to do pain and panic, to, to be that kind of torturer. That's why Satan or Lucifer or Beelzebub or whatever you want to call him, the, the fallen angel of the Bible is essentially a narcissist near the beginning. The devil has always been a narcissist, and will and a, and a narcissist has always been the devil. Anyways, because you need that lack of empathy, that harshness of emotions to uh, to to be the best at torturing, to be the best at punishing and making people uncomfortable and sad. In fact, uh, a lot of what um, you actually do get kind of like this within that first fifteen, you get kind of like this in-your-face motif that. Uh, he does. He kind of like, uh, with the other gods, he's kind of like, oh, blah, blah. He's kind of in their zone, in their personal space with that. He does kind of reach out, and then Hercules responds by kind of crushing his fingers. Kind of like Hercules is like, oh, here's a boundary. And Hades don't like that. Um, these types of people don't like that. 
anyways, we're given um we're given that back given like you know Zeus and Hera and uh, Hercules and most and most of the other gods and uh, then Pegasus is born and all this stuff. It's all pretty good. You see that? Then we're given an introduction to the underworld, which when people are like, "This movie's not as good looking as other Disney films," oh come on, look at the underworld here. It's fantastic looking. That's amazing looking. That's good stuff. This is some good backgrounds. Anywho, you have a. Uh, Hades, you introduce pain and panic, and uh, then we're introduced to the Fates, who also give us our first look at a concept that will come up multiple times of the life thread cutting. In fact, it's really, really important because it sets up a narrative device used later on for, for suspense and to clearly illustrate a concept which might not be so might be a little esoteric for younger audiences it's also a scary concept the idea that your entire life is hanging by a thread <laughs> interesting you know hmm anyways we are then given a rundown of the planetary alignment with a nicely done visual reference and a bit about well about why Hades is doing what he, we've already got his established why and then we're doing his what you know, in journalism, there's a who, what, when, where, why, and how. So the five W's in NH. When you're making an article, or in the first 15 minutes of your movie, you have to kind of hit all of those. The who, this is Hercules and Hades. The what, the upcoming dispute between them, that upcoming war. The why, Hades' um, dissatisfaction with his lot in life. The when, we're given that, 18 years from then. And the, um, let's say, who, what, when, where... Oh, wait, where? where well, that's basically, you know, Olympus and Hades and all this stuff. Just basically Earth, that, that section there. And then the how, which we're given through, like, all these monsters and stuff. Actually, you'll find that his little thing of monsters there, a lot of those monsters don't even make it to that day because of, well, kind of a self-defeating prophecy. He's given a prophecy that says, hey, if Hercules fights in your war, he's going to, you will lose. You'll win if he doesn't. You'll lose if he does. And Hades looks at this as like, oh, no, kind of like uh, a King Herod um, being like, I want you to go out and kill all the male babies in this thing to find the Christ child. That type of thing. Oh, man, there's a lot in here where they kind of they, there's there's weird parallels to that. But those weird parallels are given through. Well, I'll get into it in a little bit. Anyways, he decides, well, how do we kill a god? How do you kill a god? <laughs> and he's, he, he introduces the concept of making Hercules mortal. And then Pain and Panic, who I like how they're animated kind of Ren and Stimpy-ish, which is, I mean, the whole, the whole movie has a fantastic art style to it. In fact, you could look at it and say, hey, this is what a Cal Arts art style would look like with a budget. <gasps> I know. Go look at those muses and think, oh, man, those muses are crystal gems, aren't they? Dang. No, everything is ruined forever. Oh, um, Meg is Rose Quartz from Steven Universe, by the way. Me Me Megara? Megara? Yeah. Megara is not introduced here yet, neither is Philotides. And, uh, or Philo, whatever you call them. Anyways, those those two characters aren't introduced because they're not really that important for the first 15 for the establishing and the setup. They're part of the hero's journey as antagonists and also like uh, as protagonists to help him on that. But it's not necessary for them to be introduced in a story yet to make you like the story or to introduce the basic idea. But we're given all this information within the first 15 minutes. Uh, within the first 15 minutes, it kind of ends where, well, it's right after Pain and Panic. Give her, They try and kill off Hercules, but because he doesn't drink the last drop of the formula that he's given, he doesn't. He retains his, uh, his strength. And that's your setup. He's then found by to uh, a, a couple who, in ancient Greek mythology, uh, Zeus is a bit of a philanderer. Yeah, Zeus is a scumbag. Um, re oh, voiced by Rip Torn in here, he's not really a scumbag. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a bit of a scumbag in, in Greek mythology. And uh, they changed that a bit to make, instead of a this being an adultery-style story, <clears throat> It's more of a Superman-style story, which goes back to that whole um, God and uh, Jesus parallel. Because the story of Superman is also a way, it also has parallels to the story of 
um, Jesus Christ or the Christ child um, from the Bible. And, you know, sent to earth there to save mankind from some indeterminate evil and eventually sacrifice his life or her life in some stories um, to, uh, yeah. Anywho, um, yeah, they set him with a Superman story and I feel that that's better because children who this is aimed at know Superman. They don't know Greek mythology and putting it into that frame and context gives them a basic understanding of it without the more seedy and nasty aspects of Greek mythology. And I have to appreciate that, that uh, I almost said Nintendo, <laughs> that Disney did that and it's good. Anyways, yeah, we're not introduced to Philatides or Megara yet. Ooh, oh man, Megara in this, or Meg, is fantastic that's a that's another character with a lot of meat to them that you can actually like go through on this but yeah um we're introduced to the first 15 and all this other stuff and they were introduced that hercules is a little bit awkward yeah he's kind of a little bit running at on all barrels and all cylinders hasn't learned to rein in his powers at all within his first about 18 years i'm well, not really he's probably about 16 17 at this point we don't know how long he's uh training with uh, Phil. Anywho, and that's about where it stops. He ends up in the spot here, and that's where this one stops at that point. The establishing shot is that this is about a history thing. This is about... this. The, the establishing shot is that this is a, a hero movie. And then, of course, like with the museum, a statues and art, and then it goes off on, off on kind of like a funky uh, derailing, kind of similar to like... A, um, the Emperor's New Groove would do, and I feel like this is the best way to present it. Now, when Hercules came out, it was originally kind of panned by critics for its art style and whatnot, but I think its art style really holds up, and I think it's actually one of the better, more stylized and interesting Disney films in that regard from this era. Anywho, I would say that the first 15 minutes, while they don't set up Phil or Meg, who are incredibly important to the film, but... They're um, not that important to the basic structure of the film at the very start of it. You you need them for the hero's journey to be completed. You don't need them for your first 15 to get people into the movie. So, do I think the first 15 minutes of this film kind of uh, set everything up and do everything right? No, I feel like there should have been some kind of reference or anything to those particular characters, and there was a little bit of fluff that could be cut down, and still you'd still be able to get a lot of the main ideas of the film through and across. So I'm going to give this one a B, um, a B- minus in that regard for the first 15 minutes. I, th I think this film is an A effort at all. Like, I mean, I feel like overall that's what it is. It's a, actually a really great film. And if I were making like a, what, there's like 70 Disney films in the canon? If I were making a top 20, it would be somewhere near the end, near like the, either like on the top there, maybe in the 19, 20, maybe just an honorable mention of like a 21 or whatnot. It's still a fantastic film and you should definitely check it out. It's also, I think, on streaming stuff. I know Disney has a streaming service they're going to introduce and I think right now it's on Netflix. So, uh, yeah, my suggestion is to go check this stuff out here. It's pretty good. I feel like the first 15 minutes do a good a good amount of establishing, but they don't truly establish the film. They just are, are compelling enough to get you to watch a little bit longer into a film. And right after that 15-minute mark, we're introduced to the concept that, well, imagine if they let Superman be seen, like let seen doing amazing feats or whatnot, and they didn't really tell him to hide that or why it's important for him to show some kind of restraint. And instead, he he accidentally hurt other people in Smallville and such. And people were like, yeah, he's a Smallville freak. He's the guy that does all this stuff. It's just terrible, man. Everyone seems to hate Hercules near the beginning, like after that 15-minute mark, up until he becomes essentially a hero. And in a way, that's that makes a lot more sense. Because... um. I think that the parents, they're kind of loving him unconditionally because of his powers. They're like, you know, they're not really sure completely how to handle that because, like I said, they're first-time parents. And also, he is super-powered and all that. So they're like, eh. They're, they're kind of your Ben and Martha Kent, but 
they're a little bit less um, competent than a Ben and Martha Kent. You get what I mean? Anywho, I feel like this movie is pretty good. First 15 minutes, like I said, do a pretty decent um, establishing of it. And they fit into my theory, so that's all good. So yeah, hit that thumbs up, that share button, that subscribe button. And uh, make sure you ring that little bell so you're notified whenever we have a brand new video here on Area DMG. And until the next video comes out, you are now caught up.